another thing that I did, specifically, that's what this was birthed out of, is that time that Kelly said, I've lost me. Um, our plan was, let's host a creative retreat. And at the time, I had a, a house up in Northern California on the lake, so it was a lake house. There was plenty of room as long as my family wasn't there, and we invited five friends, photographers, a teacher who had to, every summer, write a um, an abridged Shakespearean play for her students, um, a couple authors, and they all came. And I cooked, and I baked, and I fed them, because that's one of the things that really fuels me as a creative. And the house was silent. I mean, for moms or women that are just muscling through their days, the silence is golden. So we had very quiet days, and then we'd get together over meals, and we would just laugh, and we would share, and we would read chapters of our books, and the photographers would come back from uh, being up north. We were in the wine country of California, and they'd go and take these beautiful pictures, and they'd share them on their computers, and we would just encourage one another. So the quiet time encouraged us as we got to dip our toes again into those creative waters. Speaking of that kind of imagery of getting back into the water and our meeting friends to be there with us. You've heard the term tribe, like this is my tribe, these are my people. Yes, yes. The term that we use is there are lifeguards. Like if you want to go into the waters of your creativity again, you don't want to just dive into the deep where there's a tide that can pull you too far from shore, when you've got practical mothering lives that you need to be, you know, taking care of everybody. We need lifeguards that can cheer us on, go for it, but you can also pull us in when we get a little too far from shore. Right. Right, to kind of set up a, a bit of a gate around yeah. it, but also give freedom. Yes. Ah, very nice, very nice. What has been the biggest change in your life since you've embraced this concept? You know, I've had lots of people say, this is good for our children to see mom passionate about something. And I think I've been so careful to be first and foremost invested at home. I would nod and say, I get the concept, but I don't know how to do both well. And I think that since publishing two books this year, my kids see me do interviews, we went to Barnes and Noble and Escondido, had it on the shelf and my kids and they just they lit up like this is real like women are really reading this or I come home from one of my retreats or they one of my kids will go with me and help do the booth and they're coming into it and saying that thing my mom does is special and they start thinking of themselves as well what could I do I mean so I think that I'm starting to see my inspired life is inspiring the kids. Nice. And they catch a vision. They catch a vision. They catch a vision. Yeah. Absolutely. I was on the show um, the, uh, a couple days ago called the Mompreneur Show. Oh, nice. Great, great. And we were talking about being entrepreneurial and being moms. And I said, entrepreneurial moms have the power to raise entrepreneurial kids. Moms who are in touch with their passions have the opportunity to raise children who are in touch with their passions. Yeah. You know, we think we're forsaking one for the other. I'm going to forsake my passions for my kids. I'm going to forsake my kids for my passion. But really, what a beautiful, messy blend if we can bring them together, right? <laughs> it is messy. It is messy sometimes is if messy. we forget to pick them up. Are you watching the clock? Because we both have, you know, yeah. kids to pick up from school. Bed. But I think it also, my kids are getting into the teen years. They're in the teen years. And it's helping us stay um, a bit more connected because we now there's projects we do together. We make videos, we have, my kids are launching their own YouTube channel for Tags and Tweens, and, and all of this was, was birthed out of- Well, then you're a of what I'm talking about. You know? Well, but you're making me appreciate it more, you know? And then I love that, that is a legacy that will be passed on, it's really, really lovely. Well, you know, our children's generation, what I heard is like there's this, this enormous percentage of the jobs that our kids are gonna occupy not been created yet. Because the world and technology is changing so fast, we want to raise children who are thinking, who are forward thinking, are creating, not consuming. Of course, they love their video games and they love their TV, but okay, time to turn it off. You see mom creating, you get busy, kid. Here's your genius hour. 
engine. You know, you, tur you turn every on board into a genius hour. And then when there's that, they come to that place of, it's time for a job, they're going to be one of the ones coming up with a job, not filling out the application. It's true. And the trick of the parent is to listen in that moment. And, and recognize that it is growing in your child. Yeah, I think because yeah. I do see that happening. But I have to go wait and make sure that the older ones don't squish the younger ones. Mm -hmm. You know their dreams because that that is part of their dream. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. It's been me fun. And just you know encouraging our dreams to grow. And whether they're just barely peeking out of the dirt or they're ready to just you know shoot a light. Well, I love that imagery of the dirt because you know the seeds. That's where they lie dormant for some time. But you remember that there was a bloom once. Yes. You know, perhaps you've had a bloom in your life, but that you came to the end of the bloom. And what happens, you know this, the seeds come out of the flower and get buried under the earth. And winter passes and the soil is hard. And that was your word. But spring comes. And maybe that's the main takeaway. Is spring comes. And with it, the light of the renaissance. The dark ages are followed by the spring. And the warmth is going to warm up better, and the seedling will sprout, and that's our life creative. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, I could sit here all day, but thank you so much. Yes, of course. We need to say goodbye so we can go look at my garden. We're going to go to the garden. Bye.